Okay, um, this is uh, one of the first videos I've done for a while. I, because of the weather down here, uh, I'm primarily a collector and I, I dig all, all the stuff I collect, basically. So, the weather's been so hot and uh, I've been through that, done that. I, I really don't take the heat too well much anymore. But, getting around that, I decided, well, I was asked if I'd make any more videos, and this is something I came up with. Uh, as a bottle collector um, and a ceramics collector, I will add down that one, um, when you're digging, especially uh, if, if you're just someone who digs uh, for their stuff, uh, you'll be in dumps. You'll be in this areas where trash has been discarded, and that means mostly anything. You, so in a lot of dumps, you, you don't know what you're going to find. Ceramics, though, is uh, a very key indicator of the date, uh, almost to the, the year, uh, the dump that you're digging in uh, either started or ended. And so uh, they're very important in a way of gauging the date of your bottles. Uh, let's say you're looking for a company and you don't know when it was in business. Well, the date of the year that company might have been in business could be... Um, uh, shown in ceramics uh, by just knowing how to find the dates uh, with this. And you will find, as a, a as someone who digs and dumps, uh, you will find ceramics. There's no doubt about it. It's the oldest um, utilitarian ware um, that besides stone, but uh, man-made. Uh, it goes back, well, who knows? And That's directly right. Nobody really knows. Uh, I'm interested uh, twofold for in ceramic. Beside, uh, it is very collectible and usable still, even after you know a hundred years or so. Um, but I'm also a potter, and uh, that's my trade. That's what I've done. That's how I've made a living. And so, um, knowing about how to make it, I appreciate what when I find uh, unique pieces. And uh, it's always a learning experience when you find something you don't quite know how they did it. And ceramics is one of those fields that will definitely, definitely do that to you. But getting back to the dating of the dumps, um, many of these companies were in business for very long. They were mostly conglomerate. Uh, they were taken over by bigger companies, you know, uh, big fish eats the little fish. Um, the majority of the stuff I'm going to show you today comes from uh, the big boom in the Ohio Valley um, uh, back in the turn of the last century. Uh, ceramics really uh, found their home there because of cheap fuel and, of course, clay. So a lot of potteries uh, in the uh, panhandle of West Virginia uh, started up. Uh, East Liverpool, Ohio became one of the key components to the... Uh, uh, world trade in, in ceramics. It was one of the uh, largest ceramic cities uh, that produced in the world. And that's saying something considering England had whole metropolis built on uh, just pipe making alone. So uh, that's a pretty good feather in your cap if you're um, uh, trying to get into the uh, ceramic history books as it was. But anyway, if you're digging in a dump, uh, you're going to find ceramics. And if it's in one piece and you want to keep it or not, Maybe you want to even know a little bit about it. Well, it's really easy to find out for most of these. Now, these are um, uh, early uh, 19, late 19th, early 19, uh, 20th century ceramics, all the way up into the, the, the 30s and the 40s, okay? So, and uh, another note is most of this is going to be hotel wear. It's not going to be the fine china that your grandmother had in the china closet. This stuff uh, was adorable, and that's why it stayed in one piece when it was thrown away accidentally or, you know, purposely. Um, so that's what you're going to find the majority of, you know. Uh, grandma's tea set, you're going to find the handle maybe, and that's it. Um, to date uh, the ceramics, it takes a little bit of a study, but um, if you're familiar either way with uh, the dates of the bottles that you're looking for and then the ceramics you find you can uh, mix and match and know almost to the letter when uh, that bottle was thrown away uh, so let's go through some of these and and uh, uh, give you some information on it now I'll give you the three the three or four major ones that's the ones you're going to find the most of 
Um, so let's start off with, um, I'll have this one here. This is the Mayer Pottery. Now they started in 1903 um, in um, know, East Liverpool and um, they, they were from another town. Uh, they were pretty big, but they were uh, eaten up by other conglomerates later on. But their main thing, along with most of them, was hotel and service wear. Um, this one's from a insurance company. Whether that was a promotion or they made it for the company and they all, all the guys at the office drank their coffee out of this, I'm not sure. But And this uh, Mark, Mayor, well, I know for a fact that he goes back to 1903. And I do know that in this, no, I don't want to say this, but I'm, I, I want to say the 50s or the 60s, he was, they were bought out uh, by one of the big ones. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to say uh, Sterling or Syracuse, one of those. But they were bought up with a whole bunch of other little potteries. This, they made a lot of stuff, but they weren't as big as, let's say, um, this right here. Um, this is an early Shenango, and at the time, um, no, this is a Syracuse. Uh, so I'm sorry. Uh, this is a Syracuse, um, the OA, um, which stands for um, Onondaga Pottery Company. They were um, taken over uh, another company, um, a Mr. Farah, uh, took over another defunct pottery and um, started this one. This it sort of is a borrow. It borrowed the name from the original company. Uh, and you're in Onondaga territory. And, uh, of course, this was made um, in the Ohio Valley. Uh, somewhere in Wheel maybe Wheeling. But that period, um, when this was here, that mark lasted... Uh, pretty much up until it started in um, Owen Daga probably started back in 1840s but it wasn't called that at the time um, then this and uh, this mark itself uh, didn't show up until about um, 1917 um, when they really went into incorporated and then from there then they eventually uh, ended up going to Sy becoming Syracuse, China. Um, so Syracuse really was big in the late later part of the 20th century. This, if you find one of these, you know uh, that this is uh, mark was used all the way up into the 1930s. <clears throat> then they changed to uh, Syracuse. They actually have the word there. I think I have one around here somewhere. Um, this is another pottery that people will find a lot of, and and it's really a lot of cool stuff comes out. Was made from this company, and um, this was uh, Shenango. Now Shenango uh, started out as another as another company. Uh, had another name. And, um, but it became a, a giant conglomerate in itself. Uh, a lot, a lot of restaurants. This is an early 40s or late 40s a restaurant. Um, looks like a seafood restaurant a cup, cup. And uh, it's very blurred out. It isn't colorful like the ones that would be made in the 1930s. And I have one of those. If you find something like this, you know you're in the late 40s most of the time. That greenish... Uh, color. Um, hmm, I don't know this one. Oh, this is a foreign. You'll find some of these. These are rare, though, in a lot of dunks of, of this time period, unless they were, you know, brought over after World War One or whatever. Um, now you're going to find a lot of this guy, and this is a 1940s and 50s mark on uh, uh, Edward M. Knowles. Um, his early marks are are a pot, and so you'll see that, and then you will see uh, this ship uh, later on. Uh, you can see 36 is the date, and a lot of them have that. Knowles is good because of that. See, it's 35, 36, 
was that pattern was run. Uh, and that mark uh, will date your, to the letter, will date your uh, uh, piece and the dump that you're in. That's a great example of that. Um, Jackson Pottery, some, not a big one, uh, West Virginia, uh, ho exclusive hotel wear. Now this design, of course, uh, is this is an older piece, probably um, the the teens um, and maybe early twenties. So you'll find this type of floral type design in the earlier. Uh, ceramics and if you see um, the design it's usually a one one color uh, blue blue ceramics that's very common with them uh, here's Inca pottery and this is um, uh, Shenango shoot uh, offshoot and this was in the 40s Inca became real popular and uh, I think it's the the clay body, which is what denotes, it isn't the, the design. I think it's the clay body, which gives it Inca. And sometimes they have uh, a little motif with a, an Inca in his uh, she, it, whatever, uh, making their pottery. Uh, so the dates that you're looking at here uh, coincide generally uh, with when those bottles that you're finding were thrown out. And you can pretty much uh, to the year uh, when that dump was started. And if you look hard enough, when it might have ended. Um, it's easier to find a dump and know when they stopped dumping. It's harder to find when they started because layers of dumps can go down to 20 feet. Um, and if you're man enough to get down that far without equipment i'm not big component equipment i don't takes the fun out of it just commercializes the whole hobby and it's for me it, it, it just i just don't feel right about it i'm more of an archaeologist in the sense where you know i'm not focusing on these uh, artifacts for one potential reason um i'm i'm incorporating everything that i find in these dumps i'm uh, learning uh, information about the society, not just the bottles that they threw away, you know, from watches to pottery. So you find all kinds of stuff in these things, and you want to know sometimes you see a big mix of this, that, and the other thing. What potter, you know, uh, when was this bottle thrown here? It's a screw cap, but yet here you, here's a handmade bottle right next to it. Uh, well, like our society is today, if you go into your cabinet, you're, you're, a medicine cabinet or one of the uh, the drawers that's underneath your uh, sink or whatever you're going to find stuff if you've lived at this house long enough you're going to find stuff that you have been keeping for like 12 15 years it's you haven't you forgot all about it you know that uh, bottle of cologne or whatever and if you still have it well that happened too back in the day more purposely than just you know absent-mindedly but when eventually it was thrown out uh, we call it late throws. You know, it's an early bottle, but it was thrown out, you know, 30 years after it was made. And, I mean, uh, that's a stretch, but once in a while that happens. With ceramics, not so much. Ceramics went out of style like clothing, and so when people got sick of it, or a restaurant especially, uh, changed hands, they wanted a whole new uh, decor. They wanted everything uh, totally uh different so they would change the ceramics uh their plates or dishes the whole thing would and this stuff would be the old restaurant stuff they'd throw it out most of the time now this is a trenton pottery very rare now to think about but when you look at trenton pottery i'm going to tell you i lived in new jersey i was i, I was born in trenton um <laughs> there's a distinct look to uh, ceramics from trenton i'm putting it next to um I'm putting it next to this guy. See how bone white that looks? It almost looks like Majola Cub wear. It's not. It's the clay body. It's very vitrified too. It, if you ever dug in Trenton, there's areas where you're going to, 
you know, probe out and all of a sudden you go down, you think you're in clamshells. No, you're in a pile of dishes, bowls, and plates that the companies have dug holes in and threw it all in. Covered it up and said, forget about it. Now, you know, houses over the years might have been built over that. I mean, it's fairly stable. It's clay after all. But, you know, it is as still as white coming out of the ground as it was when it was first made. So this, and this guy uh, was in business um, all the way up into the 1940s. So you'll find his, their stuff, all exclusive restaurant, restaurant wear. Um, not to say that they made toilet seats too, by the way, this company. So uh, they were very uh, diverse, to say the least. And in pottery, you have to be. Uh, you can't make money in, unless you roll with the flow, as they say. Hall China is one of the Chinese, uh, China companies that you're going to find probably most of. This is a very modern creamer. Probably, it's the 50s, I know it is. Uh, or late 40s. Because that's the dump I was in. And this is their, primarily this is their mark. Now, Hall China started, again, way back in 1903. It was like a big boom. Everybody discovered coal, uh, in the Ohio Valley, fuel was cheap, and uh, clay was readily available, and it wasn't hard to get investors to uh, chip in some money, and you were in business, and there were hundreds of them did that. Um, but Hall, this little guy here, um, probably goes back to the 40s, although Hall started in 1903. Um, they made. They also made dinner, dinnerware, and toilet seats. I guess toilet seats were the craze back then. Um, uh, they were instrumental. This company was one of the main. They were revolutionary in the fact that they dis, they developed the one fire system. What's what's the big deal about that? You could throw your piece, dry it out, glaze it, and fire it all at the same time. Uh, fire it and glaze it at the same time which is not conventional you in most cases you have to after your piece is dried you have to um, uh, bisque fire it that is to get total moisture out of it and uh, out of the out of the clay so it doesn't blow up in your kiln uh, and then you fire it a little step higher so the glaze will adhere to the body uh, so it's always a two fire system traditionally but Good old Hall figured it out. Robert Hall, his, well, his son, actually, uh, figured this, Taggart, I think his name was, there's a Tagaman or something like that. He figured out an old Chinese, the old Chinese method of the one fire pottery, and it revolutionized the industry. And this probably is a good example of that one fire. Uh, very plain. I mean, most of the Hall's restaurant wear isn't, isn't fancy. I've got a whole sack of stuff behind me um, here that, and I wish I could find a a haul, but I but I have tons of it and I can't find it. Let's see, who the heck is this? Another restaurant. I don't know. It's not haul though. Syracuse, and that is a cool cup it's a little crack but it doesn't make much it didn't take away from the the uh spray paint it's it's it was a it was airbrushed over a stencil that's how simple they got in the 50s this is definitely 50s uh yeah i wish i could give you another example of the i got cut off i guess so i don't know but they were prolific uh here's a good example of another uh a Jackson uh, piece uh, restaurant stenciled again but this is 1940s um, look at the uh, logos on under the piece if you look up the history of these places you will see how they dated um, their pieces by changing the font changing the design and pretty much when pottery was thrown away it they the old China might have lingered around. You'll find pieces of the flow blue and stuff. But generally, when you're looking at restaurant wear and you find this, 
it could have been thrown away the day before it went off to the dump. So by finding out the date of this stuff, you will date your dump and be more acquainted with the type of bottles you're finding there and uh, appreciate some really, uh, really cool stuff. Well, I hope I get back to talk to you again. Uh, my season for digging isn't for another close to two months, so I will still be hanging out, but I hope to throw out another video here um, soon. Something about, um, I think, how to make a clay bottle. The whole thing about um, ceramics for me was I got into it because I wanted to make this, this kind of stuff. I was digging it, so I thought, why can't I dig it, uh, make it? And that's when I got into ceramics, so I can make a good old whiskey jug. And uh, I have made several of them over the years. Um, so, talk to you later. Have a good day.